Well, hey, today we're continuing to talk about chronic pain, and we are talking specifically today in this video to the spouses, to the parents, or to the good friends of someone that's struggling with chronic pain. I have Carrie back in the studio, a mental health professional that works with chronic uh, pain patients all the time. So this is a good video. I imagine for a lot of people, this is gonna be a really important video. Help us understand how to help the people in our life. Yeah, yeah it's, it's very often I talk to clients and, and it's easier to probably be the person with chronic pain mm -hmm. than the parent or the spouse because they don't really, they can't feel what we're feeling physically. And I've been married for 16 years and my husband's a therapist as well. And I think it took us the first 15 to kind of really get into a wow. group with this. Plus having children on top of it, it just is, it has made it very complicated and it's a lot of hard conversations mm -hmm. and, and ex explaining what you need and what you don't need and what limits are and, 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 okay. and those type of things. So it's really difficult. Um, going through with myself with my mom, uh, you know, I say she was the one that would spend weeks on end with me in college um, through my surgeries. And so we have a very close relationship walking through sure. all this chronic pain. Um, and it is very hard, I think, on the on the spouses and the parents because they feel really helpless and they don't know what they can do to make things better. Okay. And sometimes it's just as simple as, I just need somebody to sit with me. I hmm. don't need you to solve something. Come watch a show with me and just be because being in chronic pain is very isolating right. because sometimes you feel like life is stopping for you and everybody else is running circles around you. Yes. And so just having that presence is sometimes one of the most powerful well, things. Well, and as a parent, like with me, with my kids, like you just want to fix it. Yeah, you just want to take it. it away. You do. So what I'm hearing you say is it's really not helpful to just be like a gerbil on a wheel running yeah. like, what do I need to do? That yeah. it might just be, just sit here yeah, and just be here. Right. Well, and the thing is, is as I say, uh, especially with kids, their anxiety feeds off their parents' anxiety. Yes. So I very rarely do I meet an anxious kiddo that doesn't have, have an anxious, anxious parent. parent. You know, and so for them, a parent is going to really struggle because they don't want their kiddo to hurt. But for them, that anxiety just trickles down. And so it's just as crucial for them to manage their anxiety okay. as to um, for their kiddo or their young adult to manage um, their anxiety. The other thing too is like I was saying, you know, constantly kind of hovering and are you okay? Mm. What's going on? It just brings more awareness to that person's yes. suffering. And lots of times they're trying to distract themselves yes. away. So I have athletes that come home from practice and the first question they get is, how are you feeling? And yes. they just want to be like, dude, can you ask me about my math test? Mm. And that's not what happens. So they might have had a good day of practice that gets pulled back to, yeah, my legs are killing me. And so lots of times too, the, people just want to be heard. They don't want a solution. But it's right. our natural instinct to say, how can I solve this? Right. Instead of, man, I'm being, you know, I'm just sorry that you're feeling this way. It's really difficult. I can't imagine right. you know, doing this every day. So it's that empathy that goes along with yes. it. The other thing is being very open with communication. What are you needing? What is working for you? You know, how can I be of help? One of the things I, I kind of struggled with my husband, and I think he, I mean, he did it with like the most sincerity is, he'd always kind of look at me like, have kind of this sad face when he'd be like, how can I help you? <laughs> and I want to go, don't look at me that way. Right. You know, and a lot of it's because I'm like, I'm still just a regular person and I want to stay as even keel as possible. Yes. But he's trying to show yes. empathy. And I'm like, I love you for it. But just be like, hey, can I grab you some dinner? Yes, that'd be great. Yes. You know, so those are the those are some of the things that I think is a struggle because they just want to help. They want to put an end to it. And that is really difficult when there isn't an end. Right. You know, so it might be like, hey, yep, today you are a down day, so I'm going to pick up the slack. Right. You know, and that can be one of the biggest. So what I'm hearing possible. you say is it's good. It's good to be even just to go to your child or to your spouse and say, what do you need from me today? Or how yeah. can I be helpful to you today? Yes. And not feel like every question or every conversation has to be centered around right. yes. the pain. Exactly. And one of the things that you see in parents sometimes is it almost becomes their identity of yes. having a, a sick kiddo and the thing is some a lot of time with chronic pain patient it becomes their identity yes. and there are benefits to it of having chronic pain that sounds awful but to be taken care of that is a benefit from mm. it so sometimes it's hard to let some of that stuff go and start working towards you know okay. separating so you do see that and so lots of times um, parents will become such big advocates for things and so it's always the front and center yeah. of their life it's like it, their cause it's their cause which is great yes. they want to fight for their kid but it becomes such a focus Focus that their kid can never just be a kid right and relax in being a kid so distractions are good yeah. finding positive outlets yeah. that are not centered around pain are good yes. doesn't mean you're avoiding no. or denying that there's no. struggles but that's good communicating good yes just sitting there watching a movie, movie and being present good. yes what else would you say 
Um, one of the other things is, you know, b being communicating or communicating and advocating for your kid yes. with their doctors. Because as I say, a lot of doctors, they... Uh, they quickly go to, there's nothing else we can do, okay. or we're not gonna do that. Um, I always say, my mom is fabulous, but I would not mess with my mom. Mm -hmm. And I remember very distinctly the day she showed up in Salt Lake City and went to my doctor and said, we are going to be doing something. Because mm -hmm. one of my doctors was trying to do everything to get me to retire, and I was 19. And wow. she's like, we need to do this. And it got to a point that I needed to do it because I couldn't really walk anymore. Wow. And the other, you know, but you also can take that to extent of, okay, enough research, sure. you know, those type of things. But to be that advocate for your kid, because lots of times they can't advocate for themselves. Right. Plus, when they, when somebody goes to the doctor, it's good to go with them because lots of times they're in pain or they're just the emotions of sitting in a, in a yes. doctor's office can be very just paralyzing. I know for me, I almost, it's almost like having PTSD when I see the tiles in, sure. in a hospital because I spent so much time in a hospital. And so to have another set of mm. ears is really important because I know um, like my trainers would go with me or even if my a teammate would sure. go with me and they would hear something that I would have missed. Sure. And that can be very Absolutely. beneficial. And I know for me, um, since I went away to college, sitting in, in, in um, waiting rooms by yourself it's is really difficult. Place. It's really difficult. And so I know for me, my pain would even flare up there because the stress was so high and so I know just having somebody even just be like hey let's just chat right. you know is such a benefit to have somebody that comes along uh, for the ride with that so how would you say how what's a good boundary maybe for parents or spouse to know from being the advocate like mm -hmm. you're saying willing mm -hmm. to do research willing mm -hmm. to go to doctor's mm -hmm. appointments and be like we're not going to take no, or there's it, nothing yeah, more yeah, for an answer. Yeah. But how do you balance that then from what you said of yeah. just not over? That's a great question because I think sometimes, you know, I know doctors are probably like, holy smokes, that's too much. And it might just be really being, you know, having that communication with a doctor of, you know, we want to do absolutely the most we can. What are the ideas that okay. we can pursue? Okay. You know, and it might be like, what, you know, what are going to be the consequences of surgery? You know, and I mean, I remember sitting actually with my physical therapist and she goes, do you, you need to understand that once you do this, you cannot go back. Hmm. That was the only person that ever said that to me. Hmm. And it's funny because now when I think about that, I'm like, huh, <laughs> hmm. A plus B got to this. Wow. And of all people, it was my physical therapist that said that to hmm. me. And so... You know, to have those conversations of what is this really going to look like? What are the true risks of this? Okay. You know, let's lay these things out. Yes, you don't want to be the bull running through your yes. doctor saying, do it. Right. You know, but you also want to be like, let's have a real conversation. You know, what are the, I say, the cost benefit analysis. Yes. I've sat with many kids making decisions of, uh, am I going to try to keep playing? Am I going to retire? Right. And we have really hard conversations of, if you keep playing, what are going to be the costs? Right. Is it worth it? Right. You know? So and I think as is. a parent, it's probably good, as hard as it is, because as parents, at least me as a parent, I yeah. like to tell my kids what to do. Yeah. But to kind of walk through that, mm -hmm. have it be a conversation, something yeah. that you're helping to empower your child to kind of own yeah. choice and consequence. And if you continue to play or whatever, here's this the pros what, and cons of that. Absolutely. And the other thing too is, especially as they're teenagers, they're trying to figure their way anyway, yes. right? And some things need to change that you might not think is the best, but they've got to, this yes. is their life right. style. Exactly. Much. This is something that they have that they're going to have to figure out how to work out for a lifetime. Yes. And so it's some things that you might be like, no, you have to go to bed at this time, but it, things would work out differently sure. to better meet their needs. And as I say, with the retirement, you know, the conversation I just had with the kiddo is, what are you coming back for? Mm -hmm. You're not coming back to go to the World Series. That's probably not going to happen. You weren't happy in your program, and you're getting ready to go to nursing school. Mm -hmm. You can't afford another surgery, and you have this big life waiting for you. That's good. And so kind those are the conversations, you know. That's good. Instead of play at all costs, win at all costs. Right. It's, what does that really look like? And performance is great. I'm not going to yeah. lie. Winning is great. All yeah. those things are great. But down the road, I mean, me not being an All-American softball player because I retired has not impacted me in any form or function. Right. Right. I feel so many ways my injuries have gotten me to yeah, the point I needed right. to be. And I have played with All-Americans. And being an All-American did not make them better engineers. Right. Or better doctors. That's right. You know, so I always look at it as what are we going to use this for? How can we take these hardships to get you to the next thing. That's great. And that's a great, great place to end today. Just thinking about um, as you continue to wrestle with this idea of chronic pain, and if you're walking with someone that's struggling with that, it's okay to be their advocate, but we also don't want it to be something that's just the constant thing of reminding them of their pain. 
but just continue to walk, use this video, use the questions, talk about this, really evaluate how you as the parent or spouse, how you're working through this and some adjustments or conversations you need to have with your, the person in your life that struggles to find out how can you better help them through this because they, they're the expert on their, themselves, so to speak. They can tell you what they need, so have ears that listen. I hope this has been beneficial information for you and we'll see you in the next video.